Careers that will never be automated. Jobs and careers that have the least automation risk. That's what we're gonna be talking about today. But before we get into that, gently tap the like button in order to defeat the evil YouTube algorithm. On this channel, we talk about personal finance, college degrees, careers, and opportunities that will lead you to success. We also talk about avoiding some of the common financial traps that people fall for all the time. If that sounds like something that interests you and you haven't done it already, make sure to smash the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so that you never miss an opportunity. Now with that out of the way, let's jump right into it. And I want to talk about five key factors that we're going to go over in every single career that we mention. These are the things that you always want to think about when it comes to careers. And by the way, all of these came from a Oxford Martin study called the future of employment that was done a few years ago. But anyways, creative intelligence tasks is kind of exactly what it sounds like. It's basically any type of task that requires creative intelligence. So for instance, if you ask somebody to take a bunch of copies of a piece of paper, it would probably take a few minutes to train them how to make the copies. And then after that, you could pretty much have them do it over and over again. It's a very repetitive task. It doesn't take very long to train somebody how to do it. That would take very little creative intelligence. However, teaching somebody how to program a copying machine, creating the hardware as well as the software, and then making it better and better every single year with each model that gets released, takes creative intelligence. The next thing is social intelligence. So you've got social intelligence tasks. This is where you're talking to another human being. There is no way that a robot would ever be able to replace a comedian, for instance. Hello, calories. It is nice to meet you. Or how about a YouTuber, someone who is an entertainer? Or how about a teacher, somebody who conveys knowledge to someone, gauges where they're at, and then figures out whether they need to get more in depth, what they missed, you know, answer all of their questions. Or somebody who's in healthcare, for instance. A lot of healthcare is simply understanding where the other person's at, understanding how much they know, and being able to communicate them whatever idea you have on whatever level that they're at. The next one is gonna be perception and manipulation tasks. So this involves the use of your hands. So doing something with your hands that a robot would not be able to be easily programmed for. So let's say that they were to create some kind of machine that actually automated that copying process that I talked about a minute ago. That's totally possible, that could absolutely happen. But what happens when the machine itself breaks down? Are they gonna be able to program robots that go diagnose the issue and then fix the machine? Probably not. Not unless it's a machine that's so common that it would actually be worth it for them to spend the money programming robots to fix that exact machine. Likely, they're still going to be technicians that actually fix the machines themselves using their fingers, using their hands, figuring out what's wrong with it, and then you know replacing that part. So there's the perception of what's wrong and then the manipulation using your hands to fix whatever that problem is. The next thing I wanna talk about is can it be replaced by an alternative that's just as good if not better. And generally speaking, this alternative would be something that can be either automated or scaled. So a really simple example of this would be in ancient times, the only way you could get your message out to hundreds or maybe thousands of people is if you got people to actually come to your speeches, okay? So you'd have to, you know, put banners out or something like that saying, hey, this person is giving a speech in the town square or something like that on this date. And then a bunch of people would come there and then you'd give your speech. And it was really limited to either hundreds hundreds or thousands of people. And things were like that for the longest time. Then at some point, they came up with some technology where you could amplify your voice. So maybe you could speak to like 100,000 people at most because of the fact that you had a speaker. So the art of public speaking is a little bit different than other types of communication. Now you can just stand in your room, talk to a camera like I'm doing right now, and you can reach millions of people potentially. This is a little bit different than public speaking. There's some subtle differences to it, but those are differences that make all the difference. And so something like public speaking, for instance, there used to be people that would literally go out and all they do every day is they tour different towns, they would come to different towns and they would just give speeches. That still happens to some extent, but it's largely been replaced by the fact that you can leverage just using a camera and then just posting it online and you can even run ads to that if you want to. So that's an example, the skill or a job like public speaking, for instance, even though it's still 
still pretty valuable. It has been somewhat replaced by a alternative that's just as good and it's a lot more scalable. And then the last thing I wanna talk about is something that was briefly touched on in the paper, but there was actually another study that went over it quite a bit more. And that is, is a task easily outsourced? So there might be some tasks that there's no way we could ever automate them. However, they can be either easily streamlined or easily outsourced to somebody who's in another country where the cost of hiring someone is much cheaper. So keep those five things in mind as we go through this. I'm gonna kind of uh, touch on all of them and you can learn from this, not just on the list, but any job that you look at in real life, you can use these five things and it's kind of just common sense. So first one we're gonna talk about is going to be logisticians. So basically they're going to take control of the logistics of an organization's supply chain. So the company that is probably the best at logistics out of any company in the world is obviously Amazon. They were the ones who made basically one to two day shipping a possibility where you are able to click a button and sometimes the next day it shows up at your door. Now, according to willrobotstakemyjob.com, there is a 1.2% chance that this job will be automated. Now, the 1.2% chance is based off of the Oxford study that I mentioned before, and I'll have that pop up on my screen if I haven't done it already. However, on this website, they also have a poll where people who are either doing the jobs themselves or they have an opinion about the job can vote and in the poll they say there's about a 50% chance that it can be somewhat automated. Now logisticians make around $74,000 a year. There is 188,000 jobs available and it's growing at 4% which is about average. So with this one, it's a perfect example of creative intelligence. So as new technology emerges, as the company expands, as laws change, as all kinds of different things change, you're gonna need people who are an expert at you know logistics and supply chain. There's always going to be ways to either streamline the process, make things a little bit better so you can make your customers more happy. And that's what logisticians are all about. That's what they do. There's no way that a robot will ever be able to take over control of that process. Even if you streamline the process to the point where it can't get any better, some law could change and all of a sudden you have to change everything and you just wasted tons of money, spending all kinds of money on like maybe a particular factory that just does that process completely automated. Maybe a new technology comes out and all of a sudden you spent you know, hundreds of millions of dollars on this factory that's completely automated and you just have to scrap it and spend another hundred million dollars on a factory. These are all decisions that have to be made by humans. There's just no way that you will ever be able to replace a human. The second one I'm gonna talk about is gonna be engineers. Now, pretty much any type of engineering is not going to be able to be automated, but for the purposes of this video, I'll just choose one type and we'll stick with mechanical engineers, which have about a 1.1% chance of automation. Now, according to the public poll, they have about a 27% chance, so that's even better than the last one. Now, mechanical engineers make around $88,000 a year. They are 316,000 jobs available, and it's growing at 4%, which is as fast as average. This is another one where when it comes to creative intelligence, engineers are kind of the ones who design a lot of the processes that work with products. So there's engineers that designed your car, all the electronics within your car. Technology is progressing ridiculously fast. Laws are changing. They have to understand all of these things and make a product that complies with everything. On top of that, they have to be able to communicate that with other people within the company. So that would be an example of a social intelligence task. Although engineers do have the stereotype of not being very socially intelligent. In some cases, engineers are actually on the ground floor and they will have to use their fingers. So you could also say that it's an example of the perception and manipulation tasks. Because of the fact that engineers oftentimes will be designing things that are physical and will be used in the physical world, you probably won't be able to outsource it very easily and there's not going to be that many alternatives. And even if it was able to be outsourced or replaced with a better alternative, engineers would just switch up their career and go to something else. This is because of the fact that the skills that engineers know are extremely coveted pretty much no matter what career they go into. I talked about this in other videos, but engineers tend to make way more money than just about any other degree no matter what career they go into, even if they go into the arts. This is because the skill set of engineering 
engineering is not only very rare, not that many people can be engineers, it requires a lot of math knowledge, for instance, which is you know, pretty unpopular, but also very practical. Engineering is extremely practical. You're basically coming up with an idea in your head, and then you're figuring out how you can make that idea exist in real life. So without a doubt, engineering is future-proof. It's not ever going to be replaced. Next one on the list is going to be artists. And just as an example, we're going to use makeup artists. So if you thought that 1.2% was good, wait until you see this. This one is 1%. Bruh. And according to the poll at the bottom, only about 20% of people think that it can be automated. Now this one, there's only about 3,400 people that are employed as makeup artists, but of course there's many other jobs for artists out there, and they make around $81,000 a year. So when it comes to creative intelligence, you can see why this one is so important. So if somebody calls you, you're on a Hollywood set, and they say, hey, you need to put makeup on somebody, and uh, you know they are pretending like they're Louis the 14th, you're gonna have to know exactly what type of makeup they were using at that time, what the style is, what the look is. You're gonna have to understand all of these things. This takes a lot of creative intelligence. There's no way that you could program this into a machine. On top of that, you have the perception and manipulation tasks that are very important when it comes to actually applying the makeup onto somebody's face. Everybody's face is gonna be a little bit different. Some people have very oily skin, some people have dry skin. You're gonna to have to determine this and then apply the makeup in a certain way. And that way will be different for every single person. So let's say you're applying makeup to somebody and they tell you, hey, I'm actually allergic to this, we can't use that. You're gonna to have to have the intelligence to know that you have to use a different makeup that will give the same result. Art in general, it's never gonna be replaced by automation, you might be able to streamline it, make it a little bit easier to do, but you're never going to be able to replace it. The next one on the list is an interesting one. It's going to be a forensic science technician. This one has a 1% chance of being replaced with about 28% chance on the poll, and they make around $59,000 a year. There's 17,200 jobs available, and it's growing at 14%, which is much, much faster than average. Now, forensic science technicians basically aid criminal investigations by collecting and analyzing analyzing evidence. So think like Dexter, for instance. So Dexter is an example of a type of forensic science technician. He's kind of like a blood spatter expert. Really good show if you've never watched it. And it's really crazy what those people are able to do. Like they're able to kind of just like look at a crime scene and kind of reenact exactly what happened in that crime scene based on where all the blood spatter is. But you can see why this would take a lot of creative intelligence. So let's say that you collected a fingerprint at the crime scene. You'd have to be able to tell if that's a fingerprint that was left by the person who committed the crime or whether it's just a random fingerprint from one of the neighbors, like just a friend or something. Or how about some blood spatter that you collect? You have to be able to analyze the evidence and then present it to other people in such a way that they would be able to understand. So that's an example of the social intelligence aspect. It's not gonna be able to be easily outsourced because you have to actually be on the scene itself. You have to be collecting the data itself. So that's an example of you know using your fingers. So that would be perception and manipulation tasks. And it won't be able to be replaced or automated by a better alternative just because of the fact that you're not really selling anything, you're just looking at a crime scene. Will it likely be streamlined? Absolutely, but at the same time, there's always going to be somebody there who has to actually analyze whatever the data is. Next one on the list is going to be registered nurse. One of the most common jobs out there, it's also a job that consistently scores really well pretty much no matter what area that you look at. Registered nurse is definitely one of the better careers that you can get into overall. This one has a 0.9% chance of being automated and only about 21% of people think that it'll be automated in the future. With this one, you're gonna make around $73,000 a year. There's three million jobs available and it's growing at 7%, which is faster than average. That is fantastic. So with this one, I think it should be pretty obvious. I mean, pretty much any, you know, one that you look at, all five of them, there's no way that it's going to be automated. Creative intelligence tasks, we're talking about people's health here. You know, you're going to be the one who is going to be taking the vitals a lot of the time. There's no way that anybody would ever trust a machine to do that in the first place, even if the machine was a little bit better. There's constant technological improvements that are being made. Like imagine if somebody starts having a heart attack all of a sudden is the robot going to know what to do? Absolutely not. They're not going to know how to recognize that. But a nurse who's been working for 10, 15 years, she's probably seen it a hundred times before. So she'll be able to easily recognize what's happening. And then she'll be able to call the right person in in order to take care of them and take the proper steps. 
Social intelligence tasks, same thing. You're gonna be communicating with patients. The way you communicate with patients is completely different than the way you would communicate with another nurse or a doctor. Perception and manipulation tasks, obviously another thing you're gonna be using your hands all the time to do very detailed work. Can it be replaced by a better alternative that can be automated or scaled? Absolutely not. We're talking about people's health here. You might be able to streamline the process a little bit. There's technology that always comes out that helps people make their job a little bit easier or do it a little bit faster, but there's no way that it's ever going to be replaced. And then can it easily be outsourced? There's no way that you can just ship somebody to another country, have them take care of their healthcare needs and then ship them back. You have to actually be in there in person. So there's no way that it can be outsourced. Next one on the list is going to be foresters. They're gonna be the people who take care of and manage different forests, parks, etc. Now there's a 0.8% chance that they're gonna be automated according to the study and according to the poll, the human poll, there's about a 28% chance. Now foresters make around $62,000 a year. There's 36,000 jobs available and it's growing at 5% which is faster than average. So this one is fairly obvious as well. Creative intelligence task, you're going to have to be going around looking at different trees, making sure they're healthy, making sure people are following the proper guidelines when it comes to managing trees, looking to see if there's a lot of debris on the forest floor and you know in some cases clearing out that debris in order to prevent fires. Social intelligence tasks, you're going to be communicating this information with other people and then they're going to be making decisions on how you should solve problems. Perception and manipulation tasks, you will be going around using your hands all the time, touching stuff. A lot of the time foresters are actually out in the forests themselves. Can it be replaced by a better alternative? Absolutely not. You have to be there, you have to be in person, and it also won't be able to be outsourced because again, you have to be there in person. Next one on the list is kind of gonna be a broad category because there were so many that fell under this category, and I'm not gonna include all of them or else the video would be really boring, but it's gonna be business specialists. Now, the one we're gonna use in this particular case is going to be sales engineers. And sales engineers are going to be used to sell complex technical products or services to businesses. So you have to be able to sell, but at the same time communicate in a technical way so you can explain high level technical stuff to business owners that they will understand. Now this one has a 0.4% chance of being automated, so basically no chance whatsoever. And according to the poll, they had a 32% chance. Sales engineers make around $103,000 a year. There's 64,500 jobs available and it's growing at 6%, which is faster than average. Now, I don't think I need to explain this one at all. I mean, creative intelligence, they're a type of engineer. They're gonna be selling to people. They have to be very creative. They have to understand the product that they're selling, first of all. They have to understand what the person they're selling to actually cares about. You know, you notice with car commercials, for instance, they hardly ever mention the really detailed technical stuff because most people out there don't care about the detailed technical stuff. There might be a few car enthusiasts here and there that you know can speak that language and they really care but for the most part the mass market doesn't really care. What they really care about is does it look nice and does it save you money on gas? So that's an example of social intelligence. Figuring out what your customer actually cares about and then communicating the parts of your product that are going to cater to those problems. Can it be replaced by a better alternative that can be either automated or scaled? Although there are some sales jobs out there that can be replaced by a better alternative that can be automated or scaled, when it comes to technical stuff like this, there's absolutely no way. There's no way that a robot would be able to explain technical stuff to a business owner in such a way to convince them to buy their product. If a business owner called the line and a robot answered, they would immediately hang up and be like, okay, I'm going to go to your competitor. Can it be easily outsourced? Maybe, but probably not. Again, when it comes to high level technical stuff and talking to a salesperson, you could technically outsource that to another country, but you know, a lot of the time they do that with customer support jobs, for instance, but when it comes to sales where the person might actually buy something and the salesman is in charge of getting them to buy that, they're probably not going to do it. Next one on the list is going to be teachers or educators. So this is going to be people who teach children in a class, for instance, but you could also add in people who are educators online. There's a lot of YouTubers, for instance, that educate people about different subjects. I would consider myself an educator as well as an entertainer, for instance. So for this example, we'll use a special education teacher, which uh, they work with students who 
have physical and mental disabilities. Their chance of being automated is 0.8% and the human poll came out at 33%. They're gonna make around $61,000 a year. There's 443,000 jobs available and it's growing at 3%, which is about average. So when it comes to creative intelligence, for instance, you're talking to someone, you're explaining a concept to them. Sometimes they're not gonna get it. Maybe they misheard something you said. Maybe it just doesn't click for them. They're not gonna get it. And as a teacher, you need to be able to understand when they don't get it. So they might make a comment back to you. Uh, can you explain this in more depth? And then a robot, there's no way they would be able to figure that out and be able to change it. On top of that, things change all the time. So let's say you are a computer science teacher, you're teaching people coding. Maybe a new language comes out, you're gonna have to be able to learn that and that takes creative intelligence so that you can teach your students. It also takes social intelligence. I think that one is really obvious. Many times you're gonna have to do perception and manipulation. You're gonna have to use your hands in order to explain things to people. Can it be outsourced to a better alternative that can be scaled? Now this one is interesting, especially with the current situation that's happening in the world right now. A lot of classes are actually going online. If this trend continues where classes continue to be online, you could potentially see a lot of jobs being taken away because generally in a class in an elementary school, for instance, there would only be maybe 20 or 30 students. You could potentially do a class with hundreds of students online if you wanted to. Now, I personally don't think the quality of the class itself would be as good, but some people out there would disagree with me. Some people would actually prefer to do classes online, so to each their own. Can it be outsourced? Again, that's something that you could potentially see happening. I think there's a lot of people here in the United States that would love to be taught by a teacher that has a British accent, for instance. But overall, I think part of it could be streamlined and automated, but the whole process, there's no way you're gonna have to replace the social part as well as the creative part. Even if you just did a video series, you still have to answer questions here and there because people are gonna have questions and they're gonna comment at you. This is why I always try to answer all the comments on the channel, although, as the channel grows, there's uh, there's a lot of comments coming in, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. Next one on the list is going to be healthcare professionals, and this is another one along with the business specialists where there were so many of these on the list that I decided to just include all of them. And this is actually the winner by a country mile. This would make up like 80% of the list. We could make pretty much all healthcare professions as ones that will never be automated. They make up 10 out of the top 15 careers that were on the list that were the least likely to be automated. On top of that, healthcare related careers are expected to grow 15% over the next 10 years on average, which is higher than any other type of career out there. This one is extremely in demand. So I think this one is pretty obvious. I mentioned nurse before and pretty much all the things I said about a nurse apply to this one. You have to have creative intelligence because you need to be able to just look at somebody, take a few vitals here and there, and then decide what they have and what steps you need to take in order to treat them or cure them. There's no way that a robot will ever be able to do that. Sure, robots can assist you. They can make your job easier. They can make it to where you get more work done, but they're never going to be able to replace healthcare professionals. And even if they could, let's just say theoretically, even if they could technically replace healthcare professionals, I don't think the laws would allow them to do it for a long, long time. Healthcare professionals are the last type, last category that would ever be replaced. Not only on a practical level, but also almost on a moral level. I don't think laws would ever allow healthcare professionals, doctors, etc., to be in a position where they could replace, uh, be replaced by robots. You have to use your hands all the time as a healthcare professional. You have to communicate with people on different levels. That's one thing a lot of people don't realize is the level of communication skills that you have to have when you are a healthcare professional. The way you describe something to a patient is gonna be different than the way you describe something to a nurse, and that's gonna be different than the way you describe something to a doctor, for instance. I don't think it'll ever be able to be replaced by something that can be automated or scaled, and it won't be able to be outsourced. I mean, you could maybe outsource part of it. I see a lot of, you know, the telehealth sort of thing going on, especially with everything that's happening in the world, and that's good. I think it's okay, and that'll replace part of the job, but nothing will ever change the fact that a lot of the time you just have to come in and, you know, the doctor sees you in person. You might be able to consult with the doctor, and then later on, you know, they say, hey, you should come in and get your blood pressure taken or you know something like that. But at the end of the day, you do have to come into the hospital in order to get labs done or get your blood pressure taken. All right, if you haven't done it already, go ahead, hit the like button, uh, smash the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, etc. that you have on the video. And before you leave, make sure to check out my other videos right here. I made them just 
for you.